Let's welcome in our co-host, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. William. Good morning, Rob. After watching the ki- uh, the robotic uh, folks yesterday, I thought I'd wear a pink T-shirt in today or a blue T-shirt. You could just identify me, the guy with the pink T-shirt. Yeah, the, the that pink, worked well. Pink T-shirt guy and pink T-shirt girl were both very tall. Yeah. They were they were tall pink T-shirt people. I don't know if you watched or not uh, uh, yesterday, not Marie. She, she works for a living, I Bill. Did, I, and <laughs> She's got a job. She's not retired yet. But, but Rob would go down and say, now let's have the young fellow with a yellow T-shirt, the girl with a green T-shirt. Just went through all the, all I'm, um, just by what color of T-shirt. What people wearing. That's exactly funny. right, yeah. The funny. robotics team from South Middle, yeah. they are going for the world championship, okay. uh, by I the way, saw, in Dallas Okay, I saw, but everybody was, like, behind, yes. and because there were yeah. so many of them yeah. here. I watched for a quick minute. So you and I should just wear T-shirts in a different color, so Rob can call upon us now. The la- forgot your name, lady, but are you, you, you're the you're one the in the yellow T-shirt. You're the w- but... yellow T-shirt. You you can speak next. Okay, got it. Good morning. <laughs> Is it okay if I introduce Maria now, Bill? Are you done? Why? Why? Are Why? you done? Or that ten let, more minutes? There's still let, to go. Let, let's skip over that part. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's say good morning. I'm to not Maria. important. It's all right. Let's say good morning to Maria Lawrenson as well. Maria, it's so nice to say good morning to you finally. <laughs> good morning. It's good to be here. How are the hospice board meetings, by the way, once Bill gets started? Oh, good heavens. <laughs> we don't call on him very often. No, but he raises his hand and then no, it's no, all... No, no, I just, I just <laughs> interrupt. I just barge right in. Yeah, that's, and sometimes that's what you have to do yeah. with that group, right? Like here. Like right. here. Hey, you got to stake out your territory. Right? Indeed. In the upcoming May 14 election, we will be asked to vote for several different folks running for offices, and uh, some of those people will advance to a general election where they will have an opponent. Uh, However, for some of these elections, they are settled in the primary, and one of those is the Board of Education races. And in Jefferson County, at our political forum uh, recently, we met Donna Joy, who is an incumbent, and James Southern. Uh, But we did not have an opportunity to speak with Ricky Twyford. She had a work commitment and was unable to attend because of that. However, we do have her in studio this morning. So let's welcome in Jefferson County Board of Education candidate, Ricky Twyford. Ricky, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. You also have another elected position you currently serve. That's correct. I'm actually on my second term as a Charlestown City Councilwoman. Mm -hmm. And I'm chair of the ordinance committee there. So I'm looking to step up and serve on a county level now, but I've really enjoyed my time as the city councilwoman. What was your motivation for running uh, the first time for city council? So actually, the f- when I originally um, w- sought the seat for city council, I had the opportunity to join the Board of Education and the city council at the same time, and I had all of my paperwork ready to go, and then it turns out there was no spot in my magisterial district for the Board of Education. So this has actually been on my radar for quite some time. Mm -hmm. But really, I just wanted to get involved. I was at a point in my life where I was now raising kids, but I was done with that part where you were trying to have kids. And I thought, you know, I can do more in this community. This is the longest I've ever lived anywhere. And I thought, I want to get involved and and give back. Okay, very good. And uh, what do you do for a living? So I'm actually a division manager for Costco Wholesale. Oh. I've been with Costco for over 25 years and have a breadth of experience there. Did you bring in a crate of tuna fish by chance? <laughs> I did not. And no giant jars paper of mayo. towels. I can look you up later, yeah. though, if you'd like. No problem. Uh, actually, yes, I would like. <laughs> okay. That would be awesome if you could I'll do that. I'll take care of you, I promise. <laughs> Thank you kindly. Uh, you're in the Cable Town District. How does that work in the uh, Jefferson County Board of Education in regards to who can serve, how many can serve from a similar district? So you can have two from any magisterial district on the Board of Education at one time. So currently, all three of us that are running are eligible to be elected. Um, so there are two from the Shepherdstown District and myself from the Cable Town District. So I actually live in Charlestown, but I'm in the Cable Town Magisterial District. I always laugh at the way that the county set up the districts. I have to pass one polling place to get to my own, but that's okay. Right. <laughs> and if you win, does somebody who's an incumbent have to lose? No, not at all. Nope. Any two of us can win. Any two of the three can win and serve. Yep. Okay, very good. So uh, why the Jefferson County Board of Education? And if you win, do you have to resign your seat as a council person? I do. So um, I thoroughly read the laws, and I can run for the position while I'm still a Charlestown City Councilwoman. But if elected, I need to resign from the city council before I'm sworn in for the Board of Education. Okay. And I'm sorry, you said why? Yes. Was that your first question? So I've lived in Jefferson County for 19 years. I have, you know, my husband and I own a home here, and I have three beautiful children. And 
they're all in the Jefferson County school system. So I'm actually on the local school improvement council for three, soon to be four of our schools. So I'm very involved and I would always present to the board of education on those local school improvement councils. And every time I thought, you know, I, I can do more, I can be more effective. I can, you know, I have more to offer. So this was the time to step up and, and run. If you're on the LSIC, do you have to attend the board of education meetings or so many per month as a requirement? You do not. So the local school improvement councils meet independently on their own. So we meet with the principal and um, other members of the community, teachers and service personnel. And then we put together presentations to give to the Board of Education. But I'm very involved um, behind the scenes watching the Board of Education meetings. So I'm very plugged in. Very good. Bill? Yeah. Uh, good morning, Ricky. Good morning. Uh, what's the size of the Board of Education, it's, Jefferson County? It's five people. Five people. And the ter- uh, terms, what, four years? It is, correct. Four years. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's uh, nonpartisan, which is great. There's mm-hmm. a move afoot a couple of years or so ago to make Board of Education partisan. Uh, that never really got the legs to make it happen. What is your view on that? Should it be partisan, nonpartisan? That's a good question, Bill. So, I think that the ability to work together regardless of politics says a lot about a person. I enjoy that the city council is nonpartisan, and I enjoy that I, I'm very pleased that the Board of Education is nonpartisan. Um, I'm not sure what adding partisan politics would give to the BOE, um, except for a much longer campaigning period, and I'm not a fan yeah. of that. Let's just be clear. <laughs> I love serving. I don't enjoy running. <laughs> um, but I think that party affiliation is far less important than what you actually do as a board member. And I can assure you that I would be responsive to the values and beliefs and tenets of our community, you know, regardless of political affiliation. Now, Bill, I want you to note that, that Ricky, while she did compliment you and say that's a good question, she didn't say it was a great question. <laughs> and she also did not say, sir, either. Yes. And we're going to have to work on that. So <laughs> You got it, sir. You're going to have to come up with a better question because you're only in the good range right now. <laughs> that's right, yeah. So let's pick up our game, Bill. Come on. I'm, I'm trying, Rob. I'm trying. Marie's on the sideline just pawing She's to ready in. to pounce. So well, I want to get I'm, my question in. I'm going to let you. I defer to the... Elder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maria. You're like welcome. Yeah. Uh, elbows today. <laughs> uh, being on the Berkeley County side of the county line, uh, I hear things in Jefferson County, hear them more than actually experience them. Okay. Uh, my impression is, though, that the Board of Education is less controversial than it has been in years past. Is that true? Do you have the same impression i think that the board has worked really hard to work come together and work together regardless of their personal feelings and that is so admirable we're here for the kids that's it that that is our number one function is to serve the kids and our community and being able to come together on both sides regardless of how you feel personally about something is paramount you know, personal agenda should not be part of it. So I would agree with you. I think yeah. that it has really come a long way, which is great. Yeah, for a while it was uh, uh, not headline news. That's uh, that's an overstatement. But it was always constantly being talked about and in controversial tone. So, But I've not heard that for the last couple of so years. No, and we certainly don't want to be yeah. a neighboring county. We want <laughs> yeah. to keep our keep things calm and moving forward. Yeah. That's, that's important. We cannot stall. So let me ask you, Ricky, um, and I just heard something very briefly, and I hope this was Jefferson County, um, in and out of executive session like four times recently. Does that sound familiar? And this is the time when um, personnel items come up, Mm -hmm. and sometimes, uh, just a full disclosure here, I worked at the Jefferson County Board for four years, six years actually okay. and Thank i can always that. remember the um the stress of spring because it's all predicated um the staffing is predicated on the need and how many students are in a particular place so you would put um personnel on a transfer list which always got everybody all worked up and sometimes almost always it didn't even didn't even happen yeah um but i think that's what was happening 
if I heard it correctly recently. Can you speak to that? Am I, do I have it right? Or so wrong? I can't speak to why, right, you know, right. to their personal, uh, not personal, I'm sorry, to the board's motivation for having to go into executive session mm-hmm. um, or what they discussed, of course. But I do know that, especially on city council, when we have something that we may need to discuss privately, we want to make absolutely sure that it needs to be an executive session, that we do everything we can to to talk about what is of a public nature before going in and after coming out of those executive sessions. So I would really fight for that on the Board of Education as well, because like you said, there are people whose livelihoods are involved in those decisions, and we want to make sure that we're just as transparent and upfront as possible. Mm-hmm. So and I- always understanding that personnel is going to is going to catapult you right into an executive session because again unless someone demands that it be um you know it be in public session then then that's um but as a rule do you feel like the current board um i think one of bill's questions was um not a whole lot of acrimony or discord do you feel that the board is doing a good job um so why are you running then yeah so i i'm not running because i'm angry about anything i know a lot of times okay. people do run because they're, they're absolutely angry about things and i don't think that's the right place to come mm-hmm. from by any means i i love serving i'm here to help i have three kids i want to make jefferson county schools the absolute best that we can so i am again i do think that it is better than it has been in the past I always think we can improve, but I'm I'm not here to turn over the apple cart. Relationship with the board and the superintendent. What do you think your role there is to um, how how do you envision the the board's um, you know role in running a school system? So I think we are obviously there to make some of the tough decisions. We leave the day-to-day operations up to the superintendent, personnel, and staffing that's under his purview. But um, as the board, we are there to really evaluate. I mean, I think that's why there's five people as opposed to a single person making decisions. It's important to have a group of people that are able to evaluate things from a myriad of viewpoints and really look at the applicability of the decisions that they're making and make sure that nothing is off the cuff or untoward. Our guest is Ricky Twyford. She's a candidate in the Jefferson County Board of Education race. There's two folks will be elected, three are running. And Ricky was unable to attend our candidate forum, so we're happy to make room for her here on the program. Ricky, a couple of philosophical questions in regards to education in general. Should students be promoted to the next grade level without having achieved the minimum requirements to do so? Well, that sure is a disservice to the next te- next teacher that is getting them. Um, we do have a state program in place now where they cannot pass third grade until they've met certain requirements. But really, that shouldn't be our only litmus test. It should be that kids should have to succeed to that level of achievement before they're moved on. It's a, it's a disservice to the kids and certainly, like I said, to the teachers to do that. And that's not what the parents have asked us to do. You know, they, they've entrusted the school system to educate their kids. And if we're not going to do that and still move them on uh, for whatever reason, that so you would be in favor of, for lack of a better way of putting it, to holding a child back a grade, for instance, if they have not achieved the minimum required to move to the next grade? I am in favor of that, not as a sweeping rule, but what I mean by that is it is our job to make sure that that does not happen. Because you don't want to have a 16-year-old in a sixth-grade classroom. No, by, by no means. No, you Billy know. Madison's. No, we're good. Billy Madison, um, nice. Good reference. It, is. <laughs> yeah. it happened. Trust yeah. me. In, in regards to discipline in the classroom, this has been one of the uh, major concerns complaints we have read on teacher surveys, the lack of control in the classroom, lack of options for a teacher who's in that situation, and the lack of support the teacher is getting from the administration and the parents in regards to disciplinary situations. What can the Jefferson County Board of Education do to improve that scenario? Okay, so last year I was fortunate to be on a parent senate um, liaison. I was the liaison for a parent senate committee where we really looked at discipline as a whole. And so we looked at some of the things that other entities are doing and we came up with a list of like alternative discipline things, not to say that it was... um, 
I mean, they were they gave us options. So you say, you know, if this is the type of infraction, then here are a few choices that we can do for discipline. And what that did was not only give administrators and teachers the ability to have a say in how they handle that kid, because every child is different. But then also we were able to say to the parent of, let's say, the victim, you know, we took one of these actions. You know, it's, it's private information, but we were able to to handle the situation in this way and have that be all transparent. Here's the book of how we discipline. Here's what we do. And we did one of these things. So when you spoke to support, man, that is so important. These teachers and administrators need to know that if we put a program in place that we have their back. Absolutely. Because nobody wants to be in a position where they are telling a child or it, you know, in my private line of work, a member, let's say at Costco, hey, this is the rule. And then somebody comes in and negates that, you know, you have to have backup. So. Along with along with discipline, the other factor that the teachers are concerned about are respect. As a school board member, how would you promote respect for teachers? That's a great question, sir. They do good. <laughs> Adaptability <laughs> is so important, and I think she really hit that one. Great part. and sir in the same line. There you go. She, she's been she has bills vote. Oh, wait. You can't vote in that election. She's coachable, Bill. She's coachable. You're doing well, Rick. You just keep hey, on. Just you. you and I from now on. Forget about these I'm other not two. saying anything. I'll just have some coffee. Uh, well, thank yeah. you very much. Um, respect is huge. Who doesn't yeah. want that in their everyday life? And, you know, these teachers are dealing with adolescents or younger children who may not have that modicum of respect yet. That's just not in their wheelhouse. So they need to get that from parents, from the Board of Education, from their administrators. Uh, so like I said, respect is just huge. We need to be able to show appreciation. We need to be able to say... Excuse me. Oh. I, I agree. We need to do that. The question is how? To how to show the respect? Yeah. yeah. As a school board member, what can you do, you and your fe fellow members can do to promote both discipline and respect in the classroom? Okay. I think part of it is getting out there, boots yeah. on the ground. I am familiar with five of our schools, very yeah. familiar because of already working in them or having worked in them with my kids. Mm -hmm. But I think that getting out there and being a presence in the school is important. We are we are not independent of this fight for our kids. We are all in this together. So I think a really big part of it is getting out there and physically talking to the teachers and thanking them for what they do, showing that respect. And then, like I said, sticking to our word. So I think more than anything with the discipline part is when there is an issue we need to be able to say we set these rules in place this is what we said we were going to do and this is what we're going to do my understanding is there is a very lengthy appeal process and it's cyclical it just keeps turning over and that has got to be frustrating for our teachers that they want to take action when there's a, a problem and their hands are kind of tied yeah in the last legislative session there was a lot of talk about uh books that are available to children. Uh, what is your view of the, the role the parents should play in the available books or in the, in the school's library? So I think that what really helps is if there's transparency with the parents as to what books are available, what is on the syllabus, what are we going to read, and then there's the option to substitute a book if they for some reason feel something needs to be different. I think that's a partnership and I don't have a problem with that. I don't think that any one decision should overrule somebody else's, but I have no problem with being very clear and upfront. I, transparency solves a lot of manners of sins in a lot of ways. So if we just say, here's what we're doing and then give some options, I, I have no problem with that. How do charter schools affect um, public schools in general? Strengthens, weakens, um, what's your take on that? Well, I think if you look at it correctly, it absolutely strengthens. So I, I don't have a problem with school choice. I think that there's, you know, there's Jefferson County Schools, there's charter schools, which is under that umbrella as well. There's homeschooling. There are options for parents, and I don't think that anybody should get upset about another option being there. I think that as Jefferson County Schools, if we want to fight for our kids, then we need to be a destination. We need to make it better. We need to be able to say, you have options, and here's why we think we're best. Competition is healthy, and I have... Do they take Sorry. away funding? That's some of the argument, that they take away funding from 
the school system, the public school system. Right. So my understanding is that every child that goes to the Jefferson County public schools, we do receive a stipend for. This is why, you know, attendance matters, not just to learn, but because um, that's all wrapped up in our budgeting, of course. But my understanding is that the detriment is not overwhelming and we can certainly operate with with that healthy competition and please keep in mind that charter schools are public schools charter right. schools they are, are listed not under private the website. schools absolutely right. it's not pay to play yeah. <laughs> correct yeah uh what do you see as the greatest challenge for jefferson county board of education today uh, budgeting staffing keeping the you know, keeping our teachers here, you know, one of the tenets of my campaign is to maintain a solid workforce. And it's very tough. I mean, we rely on so many substitute teachers right now, and I would love to fill those positions permanently. We have a hard time getting people here, you know, which is goes back to the respect. Yeah. It obviously goes to pay. We need we need people here. There are people who will serve as a Jefferson County teacher for a lot of reasons you know it doesn't it doesn't just have to be monetary so um so anyway yes i think that staffing is one of our it's ahead. interesting i think if that question had been asked two years or so ago school safety would have been included mm -hmm. i do not hear that much as much now obviously school safety is cyclical and if there's the next time there's we have a horrible school shooting then it'll be at the top of everybody's list but right now they don't talk about it as much as they did yeah, so I actually do safety for a living in my yeah. private job. That's that's yeah. what I'm a division manager for. So one of the things I did recently uh, when I was in leadership West Virginia is I reached out to one of the other people that was in my class, and she actually handles um, safety for our schools. They have a federal grant that they yeah. are able to offer West Virginia schools face, rec face recognition cameras at no cost. So I've actually already connected her with Nicole Reed from Charlestown Middle School because I think it's something that we should look into, especially if it's at no cost to us. So safety is one of my other tenants. It's like yeah. I paid you to ask, Bill. I did not. <laughs> um, but it's one of the other tenants because it is something that I'm passionate about in my private life as well. Two of the uh, three candidates will advance in this election for the Jefferson County Board of Education. And remember in the primary, this is the final vote for uh, Board of Education. There's no general election uh, for this in November. This is uh, when it happens, and that includes Berkeley County's race as well, which is why you should turn out for the primary as well as the general election, uh, too. Ricky, you're on the School Improvement Council. Can you tell us something that you did on the LSIC uh, that helped improve schools uh, and as part of your experience on that uh, group? Sure, a couple of things. We were instrumental in getting the windows replaced at Wright Denny, which if any of you know, it's a very, very old school in Charlestown. And it's got circular windows and arch windows. It was very hard to get those replaced. So that was one of the things that we were working on. And then currently, one of the things we're working on is getting an additional school resource officer for one of our schools. So our high schools are fortunate enough to have school resource officers there on site at all times. But I think that we need one in one of our middle schools as well. He's able to come part time and they feed him well, but we'd like to have him permanently. So that's one of the things that we're asking for. Right uh, your thoughts on locality pay in the Eastern Panhandle for teachers, staff and such in the school systems. So I think it's crucial. Uh, Charleston does not have the same issues that we have with paying teachers here uh, we're up against washington county and loudon county and i think it's important to realize that we have a different set of requirements living here in the eastern panhandle it's beautiful and it's wonderful you know gateway to almost heaven <laughs> but we absolutely um, have challenges when it comes to recruiting and maintaining the the workforce and so i think we need some help with that so i would like to see the Jefferson and Berkeley County Board of Educations lobby the State Board of Education, the legislators to really have, you know, have a voice about what the Eastern Panhandle needs. Final couple of seconds, uh, please uh, look into your camera and, and tell those watching on TV 10 in Jefferson County and listening on the radio or watching on our Facebook stream why they should vote for you for the Board of Education. All right. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Ricky Twyford. I'm running for Jefferson County Board of Education. I'm on my second term as a Charlestown City Councilwoman, and I'm ready to step up and help our county's kids. I am 100% committed to the values and beliefs of our community, and I support that, knowing that putting me on the Board of Education means that your voice will be heard. I ask humbly that you vote on May 14th, and I ask for your vote for Ricky Twyford for Jefferson County Board of Education. Thank you so much. Well done. Thank now, you. Bill, let's go out and get that crate of tuna from Costco <laughs> that's out there. <laughs> Toilet paper. With, with Toilet crackers. Paper. Man, I got a shopping list now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs>